hey guys hi welcome to my channel this is Radha Krishna and uh, this video is going to be about different types of satellites and what can we actually or what do we actually observe from satellites and when when I say we it's, all, it's going to be about the humanity all the countries all the space agencies the commercial companies and all so this is you know if you if you're seeing this video this video will touch about almost all possible kinds of observations of satellites although I cannot actually address each and every satellite so I'm going to miss out some of those but i'll try to address major satellite uses and different types of satellites basically so in my last video i was uh, trying to tell you about uh, various ISRO centers and the roles of um, different ISRO centers so you must have got a gist of how a mission actually progresses so there's some conception there's planning there's design and then there's implementation and then the mission actually happens and then you do operations right so um, so basically I was talking about earth observation satellites in my last video so what those satellites do basically when they are um, launched they actually observe earth okay so examples of earth observation satellites Resosat 2 as you already talked about in my last video and then we've got Landsat from NASA with USGS basically and we've got Sentinel from European Space Agency we've got SPOT we've got uh, um, uh, Cardosat from uh, ISRO and uh, different more satellites right so all of these satellites that I just took the name of right they're all low earth observing low earth orbiting satellites they are called as LEO satellites okay although they are earth observation satellites that's a category of the use but depending on the orbit there's another category right so if the orbit is closer around maybe 200 hundred kilometers to um, I, I would say 900,000 kilometers we call them as LEO satellites all right and then we've got geo satellites right so they might be either geosynchronous or geostationary so now what are geosynchronous satellites or geostationary satellites basically when the earth is revolving uh, the satellites also revolve with the same pace as the earth right so if I launched a satellite on India and when the earth is revolving or I would say rotating so earth is rotating the satellite also revolves around earth basically with the same speed of the rotation of earth so you can observe that it is logged actually to India so these are called geostationary satellites and then uh, there is a small deviation in the orbit and uh, the satellite actually goes a little up and down while rotating it is called as geosynchronous satellites most of the satellites which are aimed to be geostationary are geosynchronous because there are small errors in the orbit right so these are geosynchronous and geostationary satellites right so for geosynchronous satellites to be possible the um, orbital speed has to be something that will actually be the rotation speed of earth so a small calculation will show you that it's almost at around 36,000 kilometers right because at this orbit right you can actually calculate the orbital speed from the centrifugal force right and uh, it has to cancel the gravity so when you calculate it's going to be v square by r is g or something like that so it's it's an easy thing that to calculate that's what i'm saying trying to say now uh, so we've talked about leo satellites and when we've talked about geo satellites now there's another type of satellite orbit basically and uh, no so we we talked about this right based on the closeness to the earth and then there's different types of categorization as well so just imagine what could be the uses of leo and geo so basically uh, in a leo orbit that is a low earth orbit the satellite is very close to earth so that means it can see things clearly all right so you've got high resolution cameras on a low earth orbit satellite and uh, the possible uh, uh, imagination could be like google maps right the imagery on google maps digital globe and some other companies uh, provide uh, the imagery that you see on google maps see imagine how high resolution that imagery is that you are actually seeing on google maps most of the imagery that you see is actually zoomable to 0.2 meters that is a 20 centimeter resolution so one pixel of the image on the map is going to be to, to 0.2 meters that is 20 centimeter that is um, you can see a long scale actually in two pixels 
on the image a long scale meaning in india we call a 30 centimeter scale as a long scale right so you if you put it on earth and see it from the satellite you actually see it in two pixels so that's how google maps is and now you can imagine what would be the resolution of spy satellites that advanced nations have right so if a commercial company is offering you high resolution imagery at 0.2 meters spy satellites could have 0.1 meter 0 0.0 5 meters that is 5 centimeters so 5 centimeters is almost like this so if you are able to see this length in satellite observe what just think about what actually you can see in satellites using satellites so this is all possible because the satellite is flying very close to me and uh, on some days, some dark nights, you can actually observe the satellites moving. So you can actually see a clear orbit of rising and setting of a satellite. It's almost, a satellite is almost like a moon, right? So it rises and it sets. So that's, that's low Earth orbiting satellites. And then there are geostationary satellites. So these satellites are around 100 kilometers to, I would say 1000 kilometers. And then, then there's geostationary satellites, which are at 36,000 kilometers. Right, and I said uh, uh, though the use of the geostationary satellites is basically they can always look at India, but these low Earth orbiting satellites rise and set, rise and set, rise and set. So if you want to always look at India, you actually need to maintain a fleet of satellites because if something rises and sets, another satellite has to rise behind it, right? Because unless if the another satellite does not come, you lose the visibility. So a fleet of satellites has to be maintained if you actually have to do a continuous vis uh, I mean, seeing of whatever area you want to see. And that is why um, uh, companies like Planet.com have launched hundreds of satellites, small satellites basically there, and uh, they see uh, the world at, I presume it was point... Uh, no, 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 it was 3 meters, 3 meters and 5 meters basically. Mm. So one picture is going to be 3 meters of that and that is also considered as a high resolution imagery these days. So 3 meters and 5 meters is basically a very good image. You can just create, you know, imagine or you can see the buildings out of it. You can see the trees and all. So that's enough for uh, any scientist that who want to analyze features in a satellite imagery. So they have a fleet of satellites always observing. So they actually have a map of whole world almost um, every day. So that's beautiful. And also they observe places multiple times a day. That's even more beautiful for someone who want to, uh, you know, do time series uh, analysis. Right, so this is the use of low Earth orbiting satellites. But then, if you have geostationary satellites, they are at 36,000 kilometers above us. And the only thing um, that you could think about is that the resolution of the imagery from that far away would not be so good. First reason being the signal strength, right? We are seeing uh, at that height and the height of 600 kilometers is actually a lot different so if you know uh, the light diverges as the strength of the light the e intensity of the light you know it diverges right so i mean the intensity decreases as a square inverse square it's just like gravity or coulomb the charge right so it's going to be i by 4 pi r square right as we go on go on it decreases because r is increasing right and the r is increasing in thousands ten thousand of kilometers this is going to be a lot of small signal only going at thirty thousand kilometers uh, uh, height and so the resolution is going to be weak and the signal is going to be weak so your noise is going to be very high so that's the only thing but uh, even then it is useful for two different uses first use is disaster management and continuous predictions continuous observations like weather observations so they can actually we have satellites which see india at every 15 minutes or every 30 minutes per se but they, we can actually observe it every minute or whatever the ping signal that we have right so we have the capability and so do many satellites many countries they have geostationary um, satellite observation satellites, geostationary earth observation satellites and other than that geostationary satellites are also useful for communication right because they're always there and uh, just imagine right you have the dish antennas for your TVs so they're always pointed to a single point in space how come? 
so uh, if you actually remember during the time of install of those dish antennas the person comes right and he actually adjusts the screws right so to point at a certain point in space and you also observe the signal from the cable that is coming from the feed of your dish antenna that is basically the signal that is being broadcasted right from the satellite whatever satellite the dish antenna guy is subscribed to okay gsat 17 gsat 18 we don't know but whatever the channel of the dish, dish has the bandwidth subscribed to he is tuning this dish antenna to that satellite and that satellite is broadcasting the signal the tv signal and then this guy is taking it through the feed and then he's decoding so if we have something in space always looking at us broadcasting some signal we can use that for communication purposes here in this case we are using it for communication of a television channel television signal other than that what it can be used for it's general communication we can use it for telephones right telecommunication we can use it for army communication general communication so you have a signal you send it to the satellite it broadcasts it to the region of interest and then you receive it at the other end so these satellites are also used for that so hereby you understood the major classification of a leo and geo right most of the time the geos are only uh, um, you know uh, placed at equators above the equator because only above the equator is its constant rotation of earth now just imagine that you are the russian president okay and you need to have a geostationary satellite for such applications now how come is it possible that i can launch a satellite over equator and i have a good observation of russia at every point in time and every point in day right I don't because Russia is not visible it is in the north so how do I uh, get a good view for that what they do is they make an orbit with a combination of both of these orbits Leo and Geo okay so their orbits are highly elliptical orbits at one end it's going to come as close as thousand kilometers right at perigee and at apogee of the orbit that is at the far end of the ellipse it's going to be 36,000 kilometers and then there are multiple satellites like this right so there is a fleet of such satellites which are at one end they are LEO satellites and then at after they go from one end to another end they are geostationary satellites right so um, imagine that uh, you are predicting weather in Russia and then uh, you've got a geostationary satellite above you right now it is moving it's not stationary I'm just saying that okay it's at 36,000 kilometers and when it is over there it moves very slowly right so uh, at apogee so you actually uh, imagine that okay Russia whole of Russia is visible now okay because my optical my or orbit is elliptical it's not on equator anymore it's almost close to poles it is moving right so i see whole of russia and then i set and then i am not able to see russia anymore and then my other satellite which was leo low earth orbit some while ago has come now at the apogee and then i can see the russia again so it's a fleet of satellites and this a combined orbit it's a highly elliptical orbit that's all there is to it so um, these satellites same orbiting satellites can also be used for communication but some of the russia i think 70 percent of the russia is actually visible from a point above india right so i mean close to india on equator so we have some points on equator which are close to india where we have placed gsats and then the gsats visibility if you see on the map it's going to intersect russia most of the russia but some of the points are not visible and that is why they have their own highly elliptical orbits right so this is uh, oh okay and this orbit is also called as Mol Molnivia orbit right so you can just uh, see about this now we actually talked about classification of a satellite in orbit based now there's uh, also a term called sun synchronous orbit right the sun synchronous orbit basically is that if a satellite came over me 
which is a leo satellite as assume it came over me at this latitude at nine o'clock local time okay tomorrow also or whatever time whatever a day it's going to come over me it is always going to come at nine o'clock so it is sun synchronous right basically sun synchronous means that at what time it uh, is coming on a latitude at a given point uh, in its orbit it is always going to come at that time at that same place so that is sun synchronous orbit right so we talked about different classifications of satellites and now there are different uses of satellites so as i said one satellite um, use case is earth observation now in earth observation satellites there are multiple uh, uh, physics that can be involved right for example if i have a smartphone i have a camera in my smartphone if i make that so if i take this camera just into space it's going to it's going to get damaged because of different radiations and the physics is completely different there so although uh, it's same but the electronics won't work because different radiations and then your ca camera won't work right you can always see it when we actually use a normal camera on a launch vehicle um, during the older PSLV launches we used to put a normal camera and then we used to see that as it uh, launched uh, during some 10 seconds or 15 seconds it used to work but then after 15 seconds a noise used to come and everything glows blank that's because some radiations uh, the, the camera has got destroyed or damaged right so if I make a camera using space grade electronics right and then I take that smartphone that special smartphone that I you can use in space and then I image your earth right so I I'm just imagine that I'm sitting in the International Space Station it's a low earth orbiting station it's a uh, iss is basically a low earth orbiting station or so it has some 600 kilometers of uh, altitude and i'm sitting in it and i'm taking the video of the earth so my phone is a low earth orbiting satellite because it's an earth observation satellite which is observing earth and i'm taking the images so i can use this data for whatever analysis i want to so this is the earth observation satellite exactly similar to this there are some satellites which have rgb bands so camera how does it work it has red green and blue bands and it takes this information combines it into an image and you see the color right but then we have different types of wavelengths other than red green and blue in optical or in in the light so we use those different kinds of wavelengths to observe earth right and here another type of classification comes into play if we observe earth using the reflection of the sunlight it is called as a passive remote sensing okay for example sun is emitting radiation and then you are observing it in the satellite after the reflection what you see in google maps what happened there was sun was actually sending its sunlight and it is reflecting so that's what you are able to see in the camera so it is a passive remote sensing but active remote sensing is that for example if you're taking some radars or any microwave satellites right what happens there is that the microwave satellite whenever it comes over you it sends a beam of energy at you and then it observes that reflection of the beam of energy which it emitted right so depending upon what angle it sent to you and what energy has come back at what angle it has come back it calculates some properties of the ground or of the place that it has observed so it is called as active remote sensing active remote sensing is that the energy that you are observing it is your own energy okay there might be there might be some minor component of energy that has come from the background but as such it's your energy that you are observing and you know what energy you sent in what phase you sent in what amplitude you sent and then you observe it back at, at any given point of time and that is called active remote sensing so we talked about uh, uh, different wavelengths in light and then we've talked about microwave remote sensing and then here when i'm talking about microwave remote sensing also uh, we are always talking about observations right so i'm taking an image right but then there are some there are some methods okay by which 
you can emit such a ray and by the reflection of such a ray you can tell what are the components in the path that you send this beam to right so i have 20% ozone 30% carbon dioxide some components like that so this is called sounding you are you're trying to profile a column of the medium uh, that you want to sense right so this is called profiling right so this is also an application so not just cameras so cameras type sensors like cameras or radars are called imaging satellites or imaging sensors and then we've also got sounding sensors what is sounding is basically you're sending something it's almost like sonar right so how sonar that what sonar does it sends and it sees right in in one direction if i send it i'm go I'm, i'm able to get the distance in this direction right so theta the angle and the uh, amplitude that i got right so the time difference that i got and i can range my distance exactly similar to this i'm sending some profile um, a beam in this angle theta angle from my axis and then i'm getting some result wherein i am able to composite the column of the medium there so this is called profiling or sounding so i i don't have any imaging here per se i'm just able to get the compositions right although if i want to image i can image these compositions also so i can make a grid and i can say in this angle theta angle i've got 30 in theta plus theta i have got some and so we can always make images but as such if i have a sensor only emitting in one direction i'm visible to able to receive at uh, uh, the same direction at a, a given sp a time right so i'm able to get the composition so this is called sounding right so uh, uh, in the sounding itself there are multiple use cases here for example there is, there is a method called as limb sounding it's a very interesting method right so imagine there's earth so imagine here there's earth and my satellite is here my earth is here so what it is doing is a satellite is observing some star on the border of the earth atmosphere so my atmosphere is here right and my satellite is here and the earth is below the atmosphere right so it is um, uh, observing some sun or some star which whose radiation we already know right so it predicts or it estimates some radiation but it only gets a component of the radiation because the atmosphere absorbs the radiation that is coming from the star or the sun or whatever source it is that it is observing so because of those absorptions we can actually calculate the composition of the atmosphere this is also a type of sounding but it is a active sounding or it's a passive sounding because we are getting the energy from the source so such uh, techniques are also used so this is also another use case of satellite right and then one more uh, satellite uh, grace is there so it's it's called as a tom and jerry uh, satellites right so it's a very interesting application so what happens is that um, nasa i think launch a couple of satellites okay and uh, they know the distance between these two satellites and they both of them are in the same orbit okay so they follow each other like this in the same elliptical orbit and they actually very precisely know what should be the distance between both of them when a uh, earth surface changes right with different with time earth surface changes and that is also when gravity changes okay because of some internal earth uh, processes gravity changed right so the distance is not as predicted right because the gravity has changed initially this will go down or some change has happened to its orbit right so the distance between this and this has gone to not predicted value and here we can estimate the gravity maps so that's how they estimate the ground water also the grace mission so it's a very interesting satellite i think you can just look over it so it's a very interesting application so such innovative methods are actually applied to get different parameters of earth's processes so these are all earth observation satellites and then comes a vast area of interplanetary missions so interplanetary missions not only indicate that we are observing planets but we observe we landed on asteroids the rosetta stone right and then we also observe uh, space the hubble telescope and the 
Chandra telescope, the X-ray telescopes. What they do is they launch this telescope into space because on the Earth we have atmosphere. The telescopes don't work as accurately. So if it is in space, we don't have atmosphere, we don't have atmospheric blurring, and then we can clearly see the stars. So all the calculations that are made this day are mostly based upon space telescopes, right? So those are also satellites because they are also revolving around Earth, right? So those are also satellites, and they are observing space. Those space observation satellites, and then we've got interplanetary missions, Chandrayaan, Mangalyaan. We've got Curiosity rover. So all of these things are for just like Earth observation satellites, but then the sensors work on the other planets. Uh, same with the uh, asteroid missions, right? So comets, right? So this is the vast field of space research. We we can actually um, get some insights out of it for helping governments, for expanding humanity's knowledge and then for quenching our thirst for science that's what um, i actually felt while telling uh, all of these things to you so this is an interesting thing that to know about so as i was saying i told you a lot of different types of classifications of satellites different types of use of satellites as well also one more interesting application uh, the indian uh, space research organization i think it's planning right also one more important notification this nothing that i speak is official guys this is all personal um, preaching you can say but this is not an official standpoint okay so something called as data relay satellites are there so when i told you right that geostationary satellites can be communicated with right for example um, i have a mission earth observation mission so it is observing some data in antarctica and i don't have a clear visibility over my ground stations all right so i have my ground station at uh, shadnagar earth observation station at shadnagar and i cannot see the satellite which is over antarctica and the south pole so how can i do download the data so what it does is basically this satellite sends its data to either of the ground stations which it can see and then we transfer that uh, data from the ground station on earth into uh, optical fiber cables or it can send this data from south pole to a geostationary satellite which it can see right because from south pole it is always observing it, it, we can see some of the geostationary satellites if it can see and then the geostationary satellite can relay that data to us okay so this is the use case now if you are using low earth orbiting satellites for such data relays it is called as data relay satellite right and there are some orbits whereby if you place some satellites in those orbits at any point of earth you can see those satellites right so if i am at any point of earth right if i am going for trekking in alps or steppe or himalayas right i cannot for example contact in gsat or insats what i do is i wait for data relay satellite to come up on me and then i contact it and then it relays my signal to whatever ground station it can see so these are called data relay satellites now other than this there is an entire class of satellites navigation satellites so basically they help us to locate ourselves on earth and there are many more satellites wow so there is uh, automatic identification system sensors on satellites which actually help in disaster management and identification of ships using same again optical or light signals in a different wavelengths basically so all of these uses are there and wow this took 30 minutes of your time but i hope you understood and you were able to appreciate what space applications can actually do for a country and its development i hope that you enjoyed this session and uh, many more sessions are going to come which have a lot of useful information like this if you liked this topic you always have to like my video and then also subscribe me that would help and encourage me we'll meet in my next video then goodbye